Hello, this presentation speaker is Dr. Jody Kreger. And Dr. Jody Kreger is currently the director of Weatherford College Trio Talent Search and is also the advisor for Weatherford College International Students Organization. Dr. Jody Kreger has a BS in psychology and a minor in mass communication from Midwestern State University, a M an MS in family studies from Texas Women's University, and a doctoral degree in educational leadership and policy studies from Charlton State University. Dr. Jody Kreger has been working at Weatherford College for over five years and has a strong background of over 25 years in the educational field. Sandy Halik Stroh, did I say it correctly? Yes, ma'am. Hooray, good for me. Mm -hmm. Is an educational specialist at Weatherford College Trio Talent Search. Sandy received her Associates of Science from Weatherford College, a BBA from Charleston State University, and her MS in Management and Leadership, also from Charleston State University. So we begin the presentation. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're welcome. My and um, we do have some other people who are very involved with the International Student Organization, James Fraley, and later on you'll learn more about him. And there is wife, Paige Fraley. And we also have Dr. Ibe, our um, Dean of Construction and Student Services. All, all of them are. <laughs> 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 And um, yeah, so we all will be a team, and we have our technical support over there, Mr. Stacy Rhodes. I'm good at putting people together, you know, to do what they're best at. <laughs> and we are going to go ahead and get started here. I know that some of you all here, many of you are international students, but you too would learn a lot from this presentation today, especially as how to, you know, um, sell the organization to other people, promote it, sorry. First of all, um, this is our beautiful logo. Um, so we are going to at some point uh, submit it to the graphic department so they can approve it. And uh, our friend James over there was able to put the, the Weatherford College logo right there. And it looks so beautiful, way better on real paper than the screen. Um, so our topic today is engaging our international students to cultivate a dynamic learning community at Weatherford College and even in the community. Uh, one of the things you would notice is that Weatherford College is sometimes perceived to be very small, very rural, just a bunch of white folks there on campus, right? Yeah, that's what some people think. Uh, if you talk to kids in Portland, well, that's what they tell you. It's only white people out there. But we have some interesting things. Weatherford College is a unique college. It's like a jail, a hidden jail, and we have to take it out from being hidden. We have to put it up there. It actually has 61 international students, and it has um, 28 countries being represented here. 28 countries, ranging from all over the world. As a matter of fact, all the continents are represented here on campus, except one. And Ms. Sami has some questions for y'all. As Dr. Kreger has stated, um, all continents except one are represented here on campus. Do I have any guesses of what continent is not represented? Antarctica? Yes! Good job, good job. Just one guess, right? Not very many people over there. Um, with that said, too, 28 countries are represented by our international students here on campus. Um, any guess? Oh, well, here's our, here's our list of them. Has anyone gotten to travel to any of these countries that are not from there? You? Where have you been? I've been to Spain. Same. I've been to Grenada. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're from Grenada. Where have you been? Germany. Germany? Oh, nice. I've been uh, to Canada. Canada. Spain. I've been to Canada, United Kingdom, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, I'm from Nigeria, I've been to Dominican Republic, I've been to Brazil, no. Germany, Germany uh, Haiti, <laughs> uh, which other one am I not in? And Spain, yes. Oh, you really are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been to Trinidad. I can tell you all where I would like to go though. I know. Well, I've been to the UK and, and Mexico as well. We have family in Mexico, so. Don't yeah. be my friend anymore. I know. He really is all of the above guy. All the above over here. So. We've been to Russia. <laughs> Russia. <laughs> okay. And any more questions? No. Okay. Well, so let us continue. 
And we'll move on to Weatherford College being a culture of um, practicing a culture of um, caring. Now, if you know, many people here at the uh, college would say this is a caring campus, this is a caring uh, environment. The people at the uh, Weatherford community, they're very caring, they're very kind, they have a good heart. And some of the things we do to show that we care is we have students transition when they come to America. Um, Jails and Paige are very, very involved in helping the kids, you know, go buy a bunch of groceries to set up the dorm, or, you know, just taking them around to show them different places around here, to get them to feel comfortable, to help ease the transition into America, and Weatherford, and not just that, but the college campus itself. Because um, the college campus could be a different world for a lot of other for students. That's the first time they come on campus. Um, it also helps to connect students to a supportive network, go back one Stacy, uh, to other international students, right? We want to connect you all to other countries and other students. We want you all to connect to faculty, staff, um, people in the community as well. And some of you are doing that very, very, very well, you know, with our community partners. And help students acculturate, meaning that you bring in your values, the traditions, um, and you learn other values, tradition, not saying that you have to give up yours. Mm -hmm. There might be some you might say, oh, I might have to give, you know, change the way I thought, um, think about stuff, um, but we're not asking you to take it all of our culture, of our values and stuff like that. We just say embrace it and, you know, merge some or totally ignore some. But we have you a culture. If I may mm -hmm. just interject very quickly, uh, one of the things with uh, the culture of caring, since we are talking about culture of caring mm -hmm. uh, and with Weatherford College, is helping students. Uh, if you are in need, whether it's financial need, uh, you have to. You can come to us. We'll find a way to help you financially. We we have that resource to be able to help students. If maybe you 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 are, you are short in your tuition money, or you need some the money for to fix your car. And uh, since I'm uh, very rough, you can always come to us in, in confidence and we'll find a way to assist you. That's part of culture of care. And as you walk around the campus, you will see various, various stations where we have free coffee, we have free uh, uh, protein bar, we have scantrons. It's for you to take, to you. It's for you, for the students. So we don't want students walking around the campus hungry. So we are here to take care of you. That's what we do. Uh, if you don't know who to go to, you can come to me, and I will take you to the appropriate individuals that will handle those situations. And everything is done in confidence. All right? So that, that's strictly part of our culture of caring. All right? I just want you to And the truth about it sometimes, when I was a Caribbean student at the Western State University, when we know our resources, we would spread the love. We tell each other because we had a really strong network among ourselves. So when there were anything out there, we would tell, you know, so we would look out for our people. Now, what are the benefits of having international students at Weatherford College? Have we ever stopped and said, wow, how can we benefit from having international students here? First of all, when the recruiters go out to recruit, they recruit high quality students. And the students who would come here in an unknown land, in an unknown place among different people, they have to be brave. They have to be risk takers. They have to be open minded to change, you know, adapt. So, high quality students, um, of course, when you're coming here, you're going to have to pay tuition, international student tuition, right? So, you're bringing revenue as well. It fosters diversity, and sometimes when we think of diversity, we think about just culture. But no, we talk about di uh, diversity in terms of, you know, uh, political ideas, uh, uh, education, religion, all of these things, okay? Um, on top of that, it promotes our college. Some of you have said to me, how do, when I ask you, how do you know about this campus, they say, Somebody told you from your homeland, told you about it. So friends or family members are telling you. Well, you all would end up telling somebody else, right? And maybe bringing some people over here to study, right? It is, so you promote our college out there. It cultivates better global citizens. 
and also build global bridges. Or if you are here, international students, and you are building bridges, right? Who knows, maybe later on, you almost say, let's do a study abroad broad program. Maybe this could jumpstart a study abroad program for like a whole semester, a real study abroad broad program. Um, and good citizens, what is going on in China right now? I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. When you feel so. What's going on in China right now? Mm -hmm. Coronavirus, right? Is it our business? Yes. Mm -hmm. It is. Because if we are to be good citizens, not just about how it will impact us, because it will impact America. China is one of the greatest nations out there. Um, they very, um, we depend on them a lot for a lot of things. Maybe this should have been in China. I don't know. I bet. I'm on Amazon. So it will impact us um, in many ways. But also at the same time, we have to ask ourselves, when people, our um, international countries and people are in trouble, where do we come in as good, responsible, uh, global citizens? We have a responsibility. We have. If I may just jump in again. Jump in. Uh, on the issue of diversity, which is what is so special to me, as the dean, I, I have my dean's for and I promote diversity. That is core and center of what I do at Wellford College. Because diversity is very important. In the, in the 21st century global citizenship. And uh, what you bring into the classroom, what you bring to Weatherford College or to Weatherford, College or Weatherford community is very important. We would be foolish to think that our culture or your culture to yourself is all it is. No, when you embrace other cultures, you become very enriched. And when you become enriched, sky is the limit. You can do a whole lot of things. So don't let, don't be silent with your talent, with that unique abilities, and with those uh, unique cultural abilities that you bring into the classroom. Share it with other people and also embrace theirs. That's one thing. And on one thing on the coronavirus, it does very quickly on, on that topic. The coronavirus is getting to become an I Very soon, it will be declared a pandemic. Pandemic means all over the world. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, last week we had that uh, in Italy there were only five, but this week over 300, going to 400. Uh, Iran over 200, going to 300, and even this morning, Nigeria. There was one case of coronavirus this morning in Nigeria. An Italian who flew into Nigeria, he works in Nigeria, but went to Italy and flew back in on the 25th of February, and yesterday was found to have what? Coronavirus. And this, one, this is in Lagos, Nigeria, with a population of over 4 million people. You can imagine the devastation of everybody in that same plane with this individual. So, the fear of the global community has been, if it gets to Nigeria or any sub-Saharan Africa, then it's going to spread like wildfire because of the density of the population. Now, sooner or later, so how do we prevent this? Proper hygiene, right? We teach everybody, wash your hands. And when you shake hands with people, keep your hands away from your face. Keep your hands away from your face, your mouth, your nose, your eyes, they are mucous membranes. So anytime you shake hands, wash your hand. If you're not sure, don't shake hand. <laughs> okay. All right? If you have your cough, cover your cough, cover your sneeze, protect others. Protect. And if you're not sure, if somebody has cold, then stay away from them because it's going to show you the same symptom. So I, I was telling my class last night about coronavirus. Let's just very quick. Because here in Texas, here in DFW area, we probably have people who have a who are already exposed to coronavirus. Before China announced it to the world, we have a lot of business and tourists who have just been in Wuhan, China, and who flew back home, but have not been accounted for, and nobody knows if they are sick right now. And some of them might be sick and thinking they have the flu until they get tested. All right, so it is serious. It's something that every one of you must take seriously. Thank you, Dr. Ibe.
something that's not in far away from us is it going to be a problem to mm -hmm. so we, you know anyway let me tell you something something dynamic can happen at Weatherford College with this diverse pool of students that we have and when we um, first of all the international students have so much to offer even though you are the minor group on campus, but you have so much more. Each one of you, each one of you, um, what we're going to do is somehow we need to find a way to meaningfully and intentionally engage the international students. But we have to make sure we develop a plan. Okay, we cannot be held to skelter. We have to know what we're doing, how we're doing it. Not just because this organization is doing some a fundraiser, we have to jump in and do a fundraiser. We have to know what our goals are and how to go about doing it. No help to skelter. And we have to have a committed core group of people. I'm going to tell you, that is one of the biggest strengths here. We have committed people from the community, and James will tell you more about that later. Even here, some of the faculty cannot be here, but we have a strong group of faculty behind us, like Nick Pugh and that Professor uh, Darrell Castillo, um, Tracy McKinley, Romney Landis. So we have people behind there, even though they cannot be here right now. Dr. Ebay from administrators, Dr. Um, Mr. Indy. You know, we have a really great group of people. We have Sammy, we have Miss Stacy. We have people, a lot of people. And trust me, we're going to utilize them all. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we are going to reestablish our Weatherford College International Students Organization. We are going to reestablish because it has been dormant way too long. And we have a great pool of students here. Weatherford College is a gem. And we have to show people what we have and how we could use this to make our um, college a better college. So this organization, ISO I refer to, International Students Organization, it, we, it, we would use it as a vehicle to push forward, um, to mobilize our international students to get to know each other, and to get to know other people on campus. Also to build a supportive network on and off campus for international students. So you all could get involved off campus, become part of off campus and on campus. And meaningful engagement, as I said earlier on, as much as you're here to learn from us, you know, go to class to learn, that's your main goal, right? We could learn so much from you all as well. So, so, so much. So, let me tell you quickly about the great things already happening. Um, it started last October when James and Fraley, James and Fraley, James and Paige, <laughs> And Heath and we got together and professors and Dr. B. And we actually had a, a welcome party which was spearheaded by the community partners. And there were a lot of kids, you know, it was really exciting for them. We had pizza lunch meetings a couple of times. We had a Thanksgiving feast to share our tradition with you all. And we had a lot of people show, even American kids as well. We love, it's not just us always going to be not only the cluster. Mm -mm. Because we wouldn't really love like that all the time. We have to be a part of other, as well, others as well. Um, we have students volunteering on campus for us, like Misaki, and they were in our office and um, um, doing stuff, volunteer for us. And, um, you know, you all volunteer for the multicultural event we had yesterday. It's supposed to be. Okay, where is multicultural event? Multicultural event yesterday, many of y'all made us beautiful posters and um, display them. That's volunteering. Um, also, Christmas around the holiday time, we had um, a house party at the Fraley's and a hair ride. And the hair ride is a <laughs> neat experience for the international <laughs> students. <laughs> it was, they thought they were going to, uh, some of them thought they were going to go and a uh, pile of hay and rock, you know, Sorry. slide down. Oh. <laughs> that was really, and it was dark outside. And we keep on talking about Michael Myers. <laughs> Do you know who is that? <laughs> and uh, so it was, so we are already doing a lot of stuff together. And I'm sorry you missed out on some, but we'll make sure we keep you in the loop, okay? <laughs> and at this point, I'm going to call um, James and Paige to talk about uh, the connection to community organizations. Okay. 
I'm James Fraley. This is my wife, Paige. And um, 28 years ago, we were newlyweds, and we lived uh, in Fort Worth near TCU. Paige had just received her master's degree there. And we wanted to befriend an international student. And so there was a young Chinese student named Jun Yin. He went by Jeffrey. And for that school year, he was a freshman at TCU, and 30, 28 years ago, things were different. They didn't have smartphones and couldn't figure things out sometimes on their own. They really were more dependent <laughs> kind of on people befriending them. Um, but Jeffrey uh, became very dear to us. We had him in our home regularly. We celebrated his birthday, um, showed him how to get a driver's license, even helped him when he wrecked his car. <laughs> and um, anyhow, after that year, Jeffrey moved on, and we befriended other international students. And um, fast forward 25 years, I get an email randomly from Jeffrey. Wow. Jeffrey's now, he's a, he's a father, <laughs> he's got a family, he's successful in his business, he's a leader in his community, in fact. And Jeffrey found my name on the internet, took the time to write a very nice thank you. And he just said, your demonstration of caring and love changed my life. And so we've kept in touch now. Mm -hmm. But um, that really profoundly impacted me. Mm -hmm. And so I retired from a 30-year aerospace engineering career about a year ago, and in this chapter of our life, we wanted to reconnect with that same organization that we volunteered with almost 30 years ago. It's called International Students Incorporated. They're at 450 universities across America. It's a large Christian organization um, whose goal is really to share the love of Christ by helping students adjust to American life and helping them connect with other students um, American students as well as international students. Much of the things that um, Deb has been sharing all along. If we can help international students adjust in their transition from you know, homesickness, um, culture shock, if we can help them transition into American academic life, they'll be better students. Yeah. They'll be much more likely to be successful in their academic goals and be able to go on in their life and give back from the way that we have. So, you know, we're taught as just good people to be good hosts, right? Mm -hmm. Be good hosts. Well, this is in a way being a good host as a country because over a million international students come to America every year, more, far more than any other country in the world. And, um, and so we're part, I'm sorry, if you go back um, uh, one slide, please. Um, we're also partnered with a, a an organization, a Christian organization on campus called C2. And so we're working with both International Students Incorporated and C2. And so we do all these various things. We've had a top golf outing. Look at Masaki's form there. She lost <laughs> <laughs> um, We have had many events on campus, pizza parties and, and stuff. And yeah, this was a funny day. We uh, got a call, hey, could you help us go to the Walmart and get some supplies? And there's going to be two of us. Well, we get there, and there's more than two. And so don't tell anybody, but we actually packed somebody kind of in the back. Um, and then they, then they, you know, that's one problem, is just carrying the people. But then when they buy so many groceries, we have to pack them around, Marina. <laughs> but um, also, a big part of what we do is we want to give them a home environment. And so... Um, statistics have shown that 70 to 80 percent of international students who come to the United States to study never get invited into an American home. And so their, their chief, uh, their primary objective in coming here is to get a good education. Their number two priority is to learn about American culture. And if 75 percent never invited into a home, they will never experience a, a very important part of our American life. And so we work with members of the community who desire to be friends with international students, and we try to help match them up. And so I was up wondering, Masaki, would you mind sharing just a little bit? Masaki is partnered with a, a family here in Weatherford, 
And so could you just share what that has meant to you? Yes. So uh, I'm an international student from Japan. Um, I, this is actually my first year of this school. And I came here last May. And I first invited, uh, got invited from that family. Um, her, uh, their name is Carlos's. Their family name is Carlos's. Um, for the Thanksgiving party. And then since I didn't have any connection with anyone at local people at the time, so that was my first time to uh, go to the actual like, American house and having some American culture, cultural parties or parties. Yeah. 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 And they were um, willing, willing to have me, and then I felt so welcomed. And then I had a good time with uh, their uh, family. I, I think they actually invited other uh, families or extended families, and then I had a really good time. And since then, uh, they sometimes invite me to have some dinner, or they even let me uh, let me stay at their house when I'm busy at school because I live far from here. Like I drive two hours every day, uh, every mm -hmm. time when I come to school, so it helped me a lot. And then I really thankful, I'm really thankful for them. Mm -hmm. So I hope um, I can have this relationship. Um, they can keep other people also can have those relationships and yeah. know more about American culture as well as their, their um, helpfulness. <laughs> Thank you, Masaki. I think Masaki has been very blessed with her relationship with the Harlesses, but I can tell you the Harless family has been equally blessed by getting to know um, Masaki and learning about her culture. And so this is a graph of the number of international students studying in the United States. Um, it's, it exceeds 1.1 million. It has begun to peak over in the last couple of years, but by far, as I mentioned earlier, the United States hosts more international students than any other country in the world. Um, this are, there's an interesting statistic. If you were to survey the existing world leaders, like heads of state, 25% of them have been educated here. So you invest in the life of some student here. The international students that come to the United States, they are the cream of the crop. They are at, they're at an elite level, academically, and even socially within their country. And so it's a hugely strategic thing, I think, for us to be good hosts to these students. Um, I'll end with this. Uh, over Christmas, um, we had one of our students, one of the international students, in our home for Christmas dinner. We shuttled him to the airport and back a couple of times. And I could tell on the way back, um, we were sharing dinner, and he just looked at me and said, James, why are you doing this? Because it didn't, you know, he asked, are you on staff at Woodford College? I'm not on staff. Why are you doing this? It didn't make sense. And so I just shared with him that as a follower of Christ, he said to love your neighbor as yourself. And Grisha, you're my neighbor. Um, and so I want to just be a good neighbor to you. And it's interesting. I get joy out of serving you. And he kind of nodded. And I think he saw, like, over the Christmas season, how our family had joy hosting students. And so, yeah, you're giving, but it's better to give than to receive. And I think that, I think Russia, it sunk in his heart because as I left him that day, he said, thank you, James, for taking me to the airport. And I said, you're welcome, my neighbor. And he said, you are my neighbor, too. <laughs> in his deep Russian voice. <laughs> and so I thought that was cool. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yes. I've been asking for, oh, sorry, you don't know, know. I've been asked the same thing, like, are you being paid to do what you do? Um, and I said to them, no, I'm not getting paid. This is, I do it because honestly, I love doing it. I enjoy doing it. And um, I was an international student many, many years ago. And the people who helped us to transition and to settle in, I mean, they, up to now, we still keep, keep in contact with some of them. So we do it because I know once upon a time, I needed that help, just like they need right now. OK? So let us go on to the next slide. Dynamic engagement at Weatherford College. 
And we are, how much time do we have, Stacey? And we are going to go ahead and we are going to go ahead and keep pushing for us to um, take on more um, stuff in the community and here on campus. One of the things I really want to push is where we can take the international students to the high school, right? And you often mentor the students there. You know there's some parts in America, um, I like to give this example, Jacksboro, a uh, high school or middle school. Some of the students have never left the little town. Yeah. And we could take the world to them. You from Africa, you from Egypt, you from Asia. Hey, meet the world. They would be excited. They don't have too many visitors. They don't. They would so appreciate that. Um, so that is one thing. Either being mentored by a staff, faculty, or you know, people on campus as well as off campus with the host family. Because the host family is mentoring, per se. And um, just um, field, field trip chaperones. Title such, we substitute um, schools in the community, and some days we need field trip chaperones like badly. Yeah. Um, so you all could help, a, help us have the program. So you see how much you all can give to the community? Um, we can also showcase our culture even more. Doesn't have to wait until one week, uh, sometime during Multicultural Week. There are other ways we can showcase our culture. Um, also, volunteering on campus, that is something we're going to start really pushing really hard. Um, I had some students who came volunteer in my office to do different things. Well, we could also do that in different other places as well. So, we are going to keep, um, uh, for the International Student Organization, I submit all the paperwork. So, I'm just waiting for, for Doug to say, you're good to go. I see no reason we should have any problem, but I have to wait for him to say, hey, you're officially an organization again, international student organization again. So, and then we'll call elections so we can have presidents, vice presidents, secretary, and stuff like that. All the different positions will be up. And now talking about all these things, and this is what I want you all to see. Think about it. Like we talk about the melting pot sometime. Do you know what the melting pot talks about? It's really talking about people. But it's an analogy when you talk about the food. A big part of a big pot, and you come and you put different types of food in the pot, right? Especially from different cultures. And it comes together as one to create something so dynamic and vibrant and unique. That is what we would like for us to happen here at the um, our campus. Something unique and you know just vibrant and dynamic. Where our learning, our um, community, learning community could be so enriched that when people think about whether for college, they don't think about, oh well, it's a small rural college with a lot of white kids. That's not what we want because that's not true anymore. We are becoming more international every day. 28 countries and um, you saw the 28 countries, right? What you need to do is get a map and look at you would see it's all over the world. Look at the map, you'll see a better picture. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to seek to um, create a dynamic learning community. And also, next page, um, we have here some students who are international students, so some of them will talk more in a minute. But we have faculty and staff who are from other countries. We have um, um, Dr. Heidi from Mexico, Dr. Oshiri Oye from Nigeria. I tried, huh? <laughs> Dr. Sang from South Korea. And that's me. I'm from Grenada. <laughs> My story starts in Grenada. <laughs> we should have quizzed them on this, huh? Uh, Dr. We should um, talk. 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 And from Nepal, I'm Dr. Alexander Ibe from Nigeria. <laughs> so, it's not just students alone. You, there are faculty and staff. So some of us have been international students, so we understand. You know, we understand your situation. So at this point, let's, um, let me just conclude here, and Sammy will talk a little more. But next slide. Let me just remind everybody about. Uh, really being intentional and staying focused on this we call global citizen. 
is not a saying anymore. It is real. For instance, people are coming in in contact with more and more people from other nations. Our virtual connection, Skyping, video game. My daughter just had a family um, come visit the summer from Australia. They met video gaming. They're buddies. They have political teams and they have pizza parties on Saturday. Pizza is going upstairs. What's going on? They have a party. Who have a party? Um, but yeah, they buy food and they all in different lands. They have party, you know, a virtual party, I guess. And then you have more traveling. People are traveling, not just for leisure and pleasure, work. Some people live every Monday, go work somewhere in Canada somewhere, and come back on Friday evening. We also have um, mand some colleges, it's mandatory for you to do a study abroad program, like a whole semester long. It's a mandatory sort of option because they're trying to help prepare you to be good global citizens. On top of that, we here are growing into a global village, something I already said. But think about it. I like to use the word village because I'm from a village. But really and truly, we have so many different people here. Even people from uh, other states sometimes feel foreign being here. And they come to our events. So they're part of the global village too. You Americans, all those of you from here, right here in the area, you're part of that global village. So keep building those bridges. And remember, we have so much we can do together here. Thank you all very much. But before I leave, um, Ms. Sammy will tell you more about how you can get in touch with us, so you can connect with us and um, get more information about us. Yes. Thank you. Um, and if this is something that's big on your heart, I know it's online. Um, Dr. Kreger, which is right here if you want to talk to her after this. Um, this is actually her contact information too, if you need to jot that down. And then these are the community-based organizations that we have talked about. Um, this is their information for International Students, Inc. and then C2 International. So definitely get in contact with these people and um, they can connect you and we can start helping out. <laughs> Thank you. And we do have a few more minutes. Um, would you all like to share something about your country or something you miss from home or something you really enjoy or what you like about Weatherford College, uh, what you're still trying to like, you know? <laughs> what, or even what struggles you're having with adapting, you know what I'm saying? It's okay too. That's okay. We know it's real. Remember being there about huh? Christmas time and there were no black cake. No ham. It didn't feel like Christmas. There were turkey, and I was like, I don't even know if I like that. Um, and it was just opening, giving, opening up gifts, and that's not what I was used to in my home. And it was more the food and the ginger beer. When I say ginger beer, not beer beer, but drink. Sorry, and it was about food and the merry making, and it was not about gifts. So there was a bunch of gifts being opened, and I'm like just looking there, and I'm like, but where's the smell of the food and stuff? Mm -hmm. So we understand. So tell us, who wants to go first? Carla? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Tell us. Uh, okay. Hi, I'm Carla. I'm from South Africa originally. I moved here about a year ago. Um, it's been really wonderful being here. The people are so friendly, and uh, like Americans are really the nicest people. Um, I have to say one of the biggest adjustments was probably my word usage because we use weird weird. <laughs> if we say it's a it's an Afrikaans or I'm Afrikaans, well we have eleven official languages in South Africa, but I'm Afrikaans. But like if I say yom, it means yes. But like everybody will know, and we'll say like yes no, and it means like anything like yeah no, yes, I understand. No. And it's like, do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that. Like the professor would be like, do you understand? I'm like, yeah, no. And they're like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> and then they the food over here. Like we have, we're very big meat eaters over there, and um, the food here is very bland. Bigger variety almost, like we have a lot of different countries. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I mean, definitely like it's really pretty here, but I do miss the climate of South Africa because our climate is pretty much like San Diego. Mm. It's really oh. lovely. <laughs> <the whole year. laughs> like, oh. Thank you for that. I learned a lot from you right there. Yes, no, okay. Yeah. So that's a legitimate yeah. answer when you ask this one, say yes, yes right? no, right? Yes, yes, yes. Helena, would you like to share? <laughs> 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 Hello, Helena. Hi, Helena. Hi, Helena. Hi, Helena. Hi, Helena. Hi, I would rather people call me Helcha, this is just easier. Helcha? Helcha. Helcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Have you nice to for me? <laughs> All right, go ahead. And one thing, I don't know what was hard to adjust here. Most likely the language, but culture and food. Because honestly, things are spicy for me here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we go anywhere. For example, Chipotle. Yes, they are, they are spicy. Yum, yum. And I'm yes. like, they're spicy. Even uh -huh. their chicken is spicy. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> How long have you been here, Helja? Since Christmas. Since Christmas. Oh, so but yeah. I've been an exchange student in Toller like two years ago. Oh, okay. In so. Toller? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I actually live in Toller. My family from Toller. Mm -hmm. They kind of like took me in and let me go to college. Okay. Oh, that's great. So, good. Yeah. And where are you from? Czech Republic. Czech Republic. So, nice to meet you again. Yeah. Yeah. Ben, would you like to go? No. <laughs> 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 you can change your mind. Anyone who wants to give your information? <laughs> Chandy, are you here? Monica, would you share something? Yes. Um, my name is Monica, and I'm a first generation student. And like being a first generation sometimes seems to be a little bit scary because, like, I don't know anything but like the town switch program, <laughs> Sammy and Miss Deborah, they really showed me like what I needed to do and then get me into the program to assist here on campus and it really has helped me to like succeed and like everything that I need. There's like resources and everything's just really wonderful and very nice on this campus. Thank I you. really enjoyed all of y'all so uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for getting involved here. Yeah. Yes. Um, anything else we wanted to talk about? Yes. 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 So, um, yeah. For y'all that don't know, like we we have started with this International Students Incorporated, but that was just in this fall. So this is something new to us. And even though one of our children did take classes here, we were never really up on campus. And um, and I just am amazed at how friendly a group of people this is, and how caring this faculty and staff really love their students and yeah. that has been so obvious to us every time we've had an event even the president of the university he'll come mm -hmm. and the vice presidents and, and just just stepping by to say how grateful they are for Deborah and all that's going on so it truly is a very unique place and we're, we're proud to be a part of it. Yeah. Thank you so much I don't know if I'll do thank you all as well. <laughs> James could you could you prefer this? Last night James yeah, so we, we are a good team. Our heart is in the right place. Yes. Anybody else? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, such a beautiful smile. Yes. Uh, my name is Fed Lumi, but people call me Fed because of what I can say. And I'm from Haiti, and I've been here for seven years, and I was at the to from an orphanage there. So it's been seven years, and I'm still like showing with the food and some like a lot of stuff. So. Welcome to America. <laughs> Last call because I think we expired our time. Our time expired. Anybody? Anybody? Let me, just, let me just take this opportunity, which I have not done that quite frequently, to, to thank the friendlies because what you do uh, is very unique. It's not something that you see quite often. Uh, you guys have been very tremendous uh, and uh, you go far and beyond the work you do for our students. So I applaud you and I thank you on behalf of the students as well as well for college. And you are wonderful call for my job. And God bless you. Thank, thank, you, thank you so you. much, Matthew. Yes, thank you. You did a good job. I'll go see you later.